here we go again, we're back up in Northland. We're here to see John and Joss Bailey at Waitangi Angus Stud. Now on the 17th, that's Tuesday the 17th of September, they've got their annual yearling bull sale. They're putting up 98 bulls. Let's go and have a look around with John and Joss. John and Joss, fantastic to be back here at Waitangi. John, you're a busy man. You're on a few boards. Oh, just uh, a few agricultural boards, well, agricultural farming boards. So I'm on the Angus New Zealand board, which is really the breed association in New Zealand and administers the breed. I'm also um, on the board of um, primary beef breeders, or PBB as it's called, and that is an agency that looks after registrations of all the breed societies, um, does a print catalogue, and looks after a tag business and so forth. And that's based in fielding as well. And I'm also on the board of Angus Pure, which I quite enjoy as well. And uh, that's really about the marketing company for the, and for the Angus breed. And um, just trying to sort of establish a, a focus for the breed of cattle, where we want to go with them and what we want to do and, and raise a profile of, of, the, of the Angus breed generally to sell more bulls. So tell us a little bit about the operation size of the place in that, John. Yeah, well, we're running about, uh, the whole farm's about 800 hectares. We're running uh, probably 600 effective. We've got a sheep flock here, but we've got 400 breeding cows. And every year we put in about 100 heifers, and that gives us great ability to cull. And, and we'll cull all year round, like a cow temperament, gone. We don't think about it. No nonsense. When we're tagging calves, if cow gives us trouble, gone. If they don't have calves, gone. You know, and, we, and it gives us a great selection. We're quite happy to knock out 15 heifers out of our yearling mob because for whatever reason. And um, we find that acceptable and we find it's following through. The cows are getting better and more productive all the way through. We don't have favourites. So how does the mature cow weight fit into the equation, John? We're growing these bulls. We want them to be a low birth weight, easy calving bull, growing through to a good 600 day weight with a very good carcass weight, which is what people get paid for. And also we want the carcass qualities in there. But what we really need to be careful of is that we're not getting our cow size too big. So for us it's very important the mature cow weight is a low number and we're working very hard. We've had the curve bender taking it up with the growth from the low birth weight. We're also looking for the curve bender now to go from the 600 weight, high growth performance animal, with a lower mature cow weight. So when your heifers and things don't get into great big cows, high maintenance cost, the fertility's in there and everything else. So that's what we're working on now. And, and we believe for a couple of the bulls we've bred now, we really are achieving those scores. We've got one bull, this N221, that we've kept, and he's a lotto son. And his mature, his mature cow weight is, is plus 79. But he has a 600 day weight of 122, yeah. with all the carcass and attributes as well. So that's where we want to be, and that's where we're aiming. Some nice young bulls out there lining up for the sale, Joss? Yes, there are. You know, there's, um, we've got quite a few new sort of exciting sires. The, the Lotto bull we, we really like. Um, we think he's going to do great things for us and we hope for others. And we also got the new Rennie Lee bull for us this year. And he's, he's looking great too. And we've also got a number by our own homebred. And again, there's some very nice types of bulls in there and we feel that they will carry on and do do the job. Now you build up a few air points, John, sourcing genetics. Yeah, yeah I do get a few air points. Yeah, I, I, I've been going to the States every year for a few years now, and um, really it's because of the genetic base over there. It's just so much bigger than us and the choice. They're a lot more further advanced in the, in the carcass side of things than we are here in New Zealand. Um, it's just a bigger variety of choice. I also get a lot of genetics out of Australia now, and um, we've had a lot of success with that. And um, but we're also getting to the stage now where we feel that, our, that a lot of our bulls that we're breeding here in New Zealand ourselves and, and, and a few others have got where we want to be. You know, a reasonable birth weight, growing through a decent 600 way date and then also having a high carcass value. The higher that number is, the more money you're going to make, potentially make out of that animal. But also what's very important, I believe, it's the fat covers, and you don't want excessive fat covers because that just takes off your yields, but also the IMF, or the marbling factor. And I believe that that's very important, especially with what I've seen in the Angus Pure and the people we're dealing with overseas, and just in the marketplace here in New Zealand. People want consistent product that's always the same, and Marbling is found to be the key that actually increases the odds of getting that same product every time. So yeah, we've been chasing it very much and I think that's, that's what we should be doing in New Zealand. We're, really, we're not in the commodity market, we won't survive in the commodity market. You know, you, 
uh, when you put your sales up against Australia and, and South America and things like that. And so we've got to actually try and produce for the top end of the consumer world because yeah. that's all we can supply anyway. So let's make the most of it and do what we can do and do it well. Now the sale's coming up 17th of September? Yeah, it's a Tuesday. Tuesday. We've had an annual sale at, at about that time for, uh, I'm not too sure how many years now. And we've got 98 bulls to sell there and um, it's slight increased la on last year's sale, but we had enough interest last year to sort of think, well, we could test the market again this year. People often ask me how we decide what bull's going to go in which sale and um, to me, I, the cutoff point is under the breed average for birth weight and we've been breeding lower birth weight bulls for a number of years now anyway just for this yearling heifer mating job but re what we really want to do is breed bulls that people can use for yearlings but also good enough to be worth while using over cows so our emphasis the last few years has been breeding bulls have a low birth weight easy calving but have growth yeah. and that's been where you're needing a bit of curve bending genetics and we believe we're getting there now. We've got some bulls, like, like we've bred a bull this year that we're very happy with and we're going to keep and use ourselves. He's got a birth weight of 1.2 and he goes out to a, a 600 day weight of 122. And it's interesting, you know, people say, oh, the small calves, they never grow. Well, in our two-year-old sale, some of the biggest bulls there are often out of heifers, a low birth weight bull, but they just keep on growing. Yeah. What's your ratio there with selling the yearling bulls to the, to the two-year-olds numbers-wise? Uh, we usually put up a catalogue of about 62 year old bulls and um, the yearling bulls we've been slowly creeping up there, we've been 75, 88 last year, be 98 this year so mm, slowly increasing and I think there's increasing demand, I think people are finding the two year old bulls are too expensive and now that we, as I say we're producing bulls that are well worth breeding and keeping on and if you look after them you'll get a lifetime of use out of them and, and it's just a cheaper way for people to get into bulls and um, do what they want to do. Now, we have a number of clients who are quite happy to buy their bulls as yearlings yeah. and carry them all the way through and they get good service out of them. Yeah. Well good luck for the sale on the 17th. I hope you have a great day you guys. Thank you very much for having us again. Now, you've got a special deal there with the Copthorn. Yeah we have a special deal with there and it's a great opportunity for people to come and spend the weekend up in the Bay of Islands or a couple of nights. The Waitangi Copthorn Hotel has a deal where they do a bed and breakfast special if you're coming to the Waitangi Inga Sale. So you just ring up them and say you're, you're coming to the Waitangi Inga Sale and book in. So, and I'd like to make sure that people feel welcome to come to the sale and have a look and see what we're doing. I think it's quite important people come and have, get a feel for what you're doing and perhaps one day they have the confidence to come back and buy a bull from us. And that'd be, that's, that's what we're really about. That'll be fantastic. Thank Good. you very much. Mm. You. Thanks, Tony. See you soon. Yeah. See you again. Yeah. <laughs> In another series. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>